Is the point I would like to thank the organizers for giving this nice opportunity. And uh, today I will be talking on the divisibility of the class number of imaginary quadratic fields. And uh, so the notations, K is a number field, and OK, the ring of integers of K, and CLK, the notation for the class group of K, and HK, the class number of K. So the complete list of imaginary quadratic fields of class number one, uh, Q of square root of D, where D is nothing but this finite set of numbers. So the uh, old conjecture, it was by Gauss, and uh, uh, there exists infinitely many D, positive D, such that, uh, because uh, um, the imaginary quadratic fields, the cases are done. For real quadratic field, there are infinitely many D, such that the class number is 1. Okay. So... <clears throat> Cohen Lenstra heuristics, it says there are a positive proportion of quadratic real quadratic fields such that the class number is divisible by n. And in this direction, there are many people work. Uh, Nagel, Ankeny, and Chawla, and Gross, and Rowley. And uh, uh, in this direction, what are the known proofs? Any n strictly greater than one natural number, there exist infinitely many quadratic number fields whose class number is divisible by n. Okay, so the most interesting, the study of infinite families uh, like uh, the notation I use, k of uh, mu of x comma n, and uh, this is uh, q adjoined with the square root of one minus mu of x to the power n. Okay, so <laughs> And the most interesting family is mu is 1, 2, or 4. These are the families studied in the literature. So in this direction, one result by Gross and uh, Rodley, this appeared in the inventions, I think. There are infinitely many imaginary quadratic fields, k of 4, 8, 7, such that n divides class number of um, k of 4, u, n. Where n is strictly greater than 3 is an odd integer. So this is uh, when mu is 4. And there is another result by Stephen Loberte. Mm, uh, they extended the result of Gross and Rowley for any odd prime and uh, uh, any values u is strictly greater than 2. Combining these two results, we have now divisibility of n. Uh, n divides uh, the class number of uh, k of uh, 4 u n for any odd integer n. Okay. okay what is u? u is x or u? Here, the first result. u is the capital u. u is any natural number strictly greater than 1. So this u is strictly greater than 1 in the first result. Okay, if you can go back a little bit, the distance. What is x and u? The notation I use, uh, there are three parameters involved, mu, m, and y. That's why I have written q of square root of 1 minus mu m to the power y. M is u here. Oh, sorry, there is a typo. That is u. K of 4 u m such that n divides h of 4 u n. And where u is any natural number strictly greater than 1. Okay. So the uh, lower 10 extended the same result for any odd prime n because n equals to 3 was missing there and uh, lower 10 result was extended. And now we have the divisibility for any integer. 
and murthy ramurthy uh, he studied in 1998 if u to the power n minus 1 is square p then uh, the collection k of 1 un this set of uh, uh, quadratic field you consider and uh, n divides the class number of the particular family of quadratic fields and as is as is how uh, he consider u comma n 3 comma 5 where n is greater than or equal to 3 and b is greater than or equal to 3 when you accept this u comma n equals to 3 comma 5 we have the result n divides h of k of 1 u n here there is no assumption on u to the power n minus 1 is square isn't it? same family there is no assumption on u to the power n minus 1 is square free. So in Ramurthy's paper, there was that assumption about the square free thing. There is no assumption of Azizul paper. And uh, you can see the exceptional case, u comma n equals to 3 comma 5, the class number becomes 1. So we don't have such kind of divisibility. That's why he avoided that u comma n equals to 3 comma 5 possibility. And uh, this is the paper. Uh, and the result by uh, Professor Kalyan and Azizul. 2019 paper and in that they prove three divides class number of the quadratic field a of 2m3 okay. and professor kalyan visited isar trivendram and he gave the detailed proof of this paper 45 minutes talk it was crystal clear talk after that my student and myself interested in generalizing that three by any prime p the same uh, proofs it was very nice talk and uh, we thought of why what is special about three we should extend it to any order right and we have extended it and uh, uh, luckily the diffundine equations the solutions and all when we were reading the work of uh, santa also worked the solutions of diffundine equation uh, in the equations they are writing number of prime factors so instead of m we can even put uh, Q instead of prime, we can even raise Q to the power R. Initially, we started with M equals to Q case, and we were successful in uh, the solution. We are looking at only number of prime factors of M, so we can put it Q to the power R. There is nothing to do with M equals to Q. Okay. So P and Q are any odd prime numbers. Exactly the same proof, and more or less uh, uh, the Diffie-Fermat equations, the solution study by TN Sore, Professor TN Sore, and those results were used, and divisibility properties also used. And this is a joint work with my student for M equals to prime power. And this is another work of mine. Long back, before starting this problem, also, I worked, I think, 2016. Uh, morning, uh, thanks to Anupam, he introduced all this Shaw group, Sakharavich state group. Uh, in the elliptical so you, if you take any odd prime p divides the cardinality of the saparevich state group this is short d notation is used for a quadratic twist of the elliptical the notation additional notation d is we are not considering the original elliptical we consider the quadratic twist by the character chi d and p divides this cardinality if and only if p divides hk where k is the imaginary quadratic field this was earlier result and when i got interested in this kind of class groups class numbers in 2016 and um, did you have assumption about existence of a p torsion point yes yes i have assumption this is not for all elliptics so i have certain assumptions on the elliptics okay yeah <laughs> sorry spelling is missing so much so he proved in 2001 uh, Q of square root of d and uh, Q of square root of minus d both are divisible by three. And there are some more result in this direction. Thomas uh, in 2002, there are infinitely many d such that three divides Q of square root of d and uh, Q of square root of m d. There any condition on m here or this for any m? Any m. So uh, there is another result by Isukal in two thousand eighteen. 
there exists infinitely many pair of imaginary quadratic fields such that three divides consecutive fields uh, Q of square root of d and Q of, Q of square root of d plus one. So many people today morning and afternoon also talked about Isaka's results and conjecture Lakshmi and just now the talk before me uh, is first results. Uh, three divisibility results. So based on his result on three divides both the consecutive fields, he made a conjecture. For any prime p and odd positive integer, there is an infinite family of successive real or imaginary quadratic field such that the class numbers are divisible by p. Okay, this is the conjecture. So the generalized version of Isuka's conjecture, the conjecture is made for p, prime number p. Instead of that, we can consider any natural number and we can look at the same thing. Instead of p, I can take any natural number k. And I can ask the same question, whether there exists uh, uh, um, consecutive quadratic fields such that k divides the class number of all these fields. So, so we have used, this is uh, uh, my joint work with uh, my student, Sunil Kumar, and uh, we produced two consecutive fields. And we could prove p divides q of square root of d and q of square root of d plus one. So mainly we have used uh, uh, lower time result and then the uh, class number divisibility. So the generalized version is for any natural number, we can ask the same Same thing. Okay, so this is a generalized proof. This is joint work with my another student, Munishwaran. And uh, the consecutive fields I consider, their class numbers are divisible by any fixed odd number R. Okay, to prove this result, we used Stephen Lobertan results and also the joint work with P. Sunil Kumar for mu equals to 2. Okay. So the main theorem statement is you take the quadratic field k of m comma y. This is q of square root of 1 minus 2m to the power y. And m is greater than or equal to 3. This is an odd number and p is also odd prime. Let y is prime power p to the power k and except finitely many m because m is strictly greater than p to the power p minus 2 divided by k minus 1 assumption we need. So except that finitely many m, we have y divides so h of k comma m comma y. For all but finitely many m, because m has uh, some cases we avoid m is strictly greater than some m naught. And the corollary of this one, instead of prime power, we can take y as p1 to power k1, p2 power k2, etc. pn to power kn, any, any number. And uh, uh, we have, if I take m is maximum of all these numbers, um, exactly same numbers, p a minus 2 divided by k a minus 1, the main theorem. And we take the maximum of everything. And except that m, um, after that stage, y divides h of k of m comma y. So, as a corollary of this main theorem, we prove the Isuka's conjecture with two consecutive fields and y can be any odd number and y divides both these consecutive class numbers, class numbers of both of these consecutive fields. <coughs> so uh, result one is p divides the class number of this k of m comma p collection for all but we have finitely many times p and the result to two, this is uh, if you take one minus two m p square free number, then p divides class number of k of m comma p and p1, p2, any twin primes, then either p1 divides uh, the class number of the corresponding quadratic field or p2 divides the class number of the quadratic, corresponding imaginary quadratic field. So, corollary of uh, our results, 
still we don't know any natural number the y part divide h of k comma y but at least we can be able to say square t part of y divides the class number okay still here corollary one we are not sure the whole of y divides h of m comma y square free part and corollary two also if one minus two m raised to the power y is square free then we get the result square free part of y divides the class number okay so uh, i will give a brief sketch of the results some of the results i will give the brief sketch and uh, before that i need what is the statement of siegel's theorem so k is any number field s is a finite set of valuation containing the Archimedean valuations, then the set of S integers, this is where the valuations becoming greater than or equal to zero for all new not in S. And uh, uh, the Siegel's theorem, it's, it says S is any finite set of valuations containing the Archimedean valuations, then f of x is a polynomial in k of x, such that the degree of f of x is greater than or equal to three, and it has a distinct roots in the algebraic closure of K, then the equation has only finitely many solutions in RS, in that set of S integers. There exists only finitely many S integers, where X comma Y in RS. Okay, so uh, whatever we study, suppose we are proving the results for finite collection of imaginary quadratic fields or finite collection, then the referees will say these all can be computed and proved by using the numerical evidence collection and uh, by stage or magma program. So whatever collections we work, we need to justify we are working with infinite collection. Finite collection nowadays programs are there and it can print the value and it can prove the divisibility. So we need to justify at the end the collections we are working is infinite and it uh, gives some kind of positive proportion and uh, for that purpose we use the Siegel's theorem the collection of number fields we work uh, where m is greater than or equal to three is any odd positive integer is an infinite collection and as a corollary instead of k is any number field we take k as q the rational numbers set of rational numbers and the s integers become z and uh, consider the polynomial y squared is 1 minus 2m to the power x and by using this polynomial we deduce the collection of fields we are working and the proofs we prove is an infinite collection. So some notations used Fibonacci sequence and Lucas sequence. Uh, this Fibonacci sequence fi minus 1 plus fi minus 2 the uh, two consecutive things define the next one fi and Lucas sequence L0 is 2 and L1 is 1. And again, Li minus 1, Li minus 2, uh, that defines Li. And capital F, this is a set defined in terms of the Lucas sequence and Fibonacci sequence. And G is a set, again, 1, 1 comma 4, K to the power R minus 1 comma K, where K is greater than or equal to 2, and R is greater than or equal to 1. And H is a set of all solutions of these two fixed Diophantine equation, D1 S squared plus G2, uh, that is nothing but lambda squared K to the power R and 3 D1 S squared minus D2, this is plus or minus lambda squared. Okay, so these are the sets. I am mostly interested in counting capital N of L lambda D1 D2 M. This is all XY satisfying this particular Diophantine equation, D1 X squared plus D2, this is nothing but lambda squared times m raised to the power y. And there is a fixed set capital S with finitely many values of lambda d1, d2, m. Okay. So the results in Diophantine equation study, it gives, apart from the equations corresponding to the elements in the infinite families f, g, h, and the examples in the set S, the equation has at most two raised to the power omega m minus one solutions. So where omega m is number of distinct prime divisors. So, so if I take f union g union h union s, except this only finitely many. Yeah. Yeah. So these are uh, the sets, and I am mostly interested in the set n of lambda d1 d2 m. Yeah. Okay. 
and uh, one more re result from Diffenden equation study solutions of Diffenden equation. I need uh, x square plus one uh, equals to two y to the power n, uh, where odd y has no solution. And then again, I'm looking at the Diffenden equation dx squared plus one equals to two m to the power y. And this is also finite set. And uh, uh, another uh, another Diffenden equation we need two m minus one x squared plus one. It's nothing but two m to the power y. These all results uh, we have taken from TN Sores papers. Finite solutions, finite number of solutions. Okay. Uh, so we need two more lemmas and proportions, so one more lemma and two proportions. So the one lemma and small lemma, when you take m, the original m, we, I define two raised to the power p minus two divided by p to the power r minus one. Uh, then the number two m raised to the power p to the power r minus one minus one doesn't divide the m to the power corresponding power p to the power r minus p to the power r minus 1 minus 1. I need this small lemma. So, yeah, proof of this lemma. I just add the number. I want to suppose as a contrary, if it divides, then I am adding the same number again. Then again, repeating the same process, I will end up with uh, 2m to the power r minus 1 minus 1 divides m to the power p to the power r minus n p to the power r minus 1 minus 2 raised to the power n minus 1. Um, <clears throat> particularly, if I take n equals to p, then I get 2m p to the power r minus 1 minus 1 divides 2 to the power p minus 1 minus 1, which is a contradiction because the, the number which divides that is strictly greater than the devices so this is a contradiction and i need this small lemma and uh, i also need the alpha if i said alpha is one plus square root of one minus two m to the power y then the main observation or the crucial point uh, plus or minus two to the power y minus one by two alpha is not a pth power in the ring of integers of the corresponding this is very crucial point. We need that lemma which I was stating, the small observation, and then this not a pth power. We use <coughs> this not a pth power to prove the required divisibility of the class numbers. And correspondingly, whenever the situation, so when 1 minus 2m to the power p is square 3, then also this is not a pth power. And we have one more for twin prime setup also. We have at least one of them corresponding to P is one of, uh, if I take P1 or P2, at least one of them uh, is not a P8 power. So uh, the P power is one of the main proportion. Part A, how it goes. So if I write 1 minus 2M to the power A, so N squared D, where N is... Uh, uh, any natural number and d is a square p integer if I split and both sides I am taking going mod 4 and uh, uh, suppose I want to prove something is p power not a p power suppose it is a p power 2y minus 1 by 2 alpha suppose it is a p power then writing beta as a plus b times square root of d and substituting and taking k equals to for all k, I get the relation beta to the power k plus 2 minus 2a beta to the power k plus 1 plus n times beta to the power k equals to 0. If I take the particular case when small k equals to p, then I get a divides 2 to the power y minus 1 by 2 and b divides 2 to the power y minus 2 times n. And I take the norms on both sides and I can conclude that either a and b both are odd or A and B both are even. One alternative situation will not occur. A is odd and B is even. That kind of situation will not occur. Either both of them odd or both of them even. So both of them odd case. We use the lemma which we observed to get a contradiction. And so that's how we concluded it cannot be written as a uh, pth power when A and B both are odd. 
and when a and b both even there are two cases we write it as a strictly greater than t where a is plus or minus 2 raised to the power s and b is uh, 2 to the power t times x x is r so in this case simplifying we get these two equations we get these two equations so we are analyzing the uh, power of 2 on the left hand side and the power of 2 on the right hand side so the maximum power of 2 dividing the right hand side that is the even number, but the maximum power of 2 dividing the left hand side because it is 2 to the power p to the power r minus 1. So you get the maximum power dividing the left hand side is odd number, which is not possible. So that's how this uh, t equals to s case. Again, we use the lemma. We observe the small lemma we observe. We get the contradiction. So that uh, uh, all the cases, we got the contradiction and that gives uh, 2 to the power y minus p minus 1 by 2 alpha. That's not a pth power. So if 1 minus 2mp is square free, uh, then uh, n equals to 1 and d itself, I can take 1 minus 2m raised to the power p. Then proceeding as before, we get the values p equals to 1, which is a contradiction. In the twin prime scenario, p1, p2, any two twin primes, then p2 minus p1 is 2. Uh, proceeding as in proof of part b, we get 2m minus 1, n by b squared equals to plus 1 equals to 2m raised to the power pi. So, uh, substituting the corresponding values, we get 2m minus 1 divides m plus 1 and m is less than or equal to 2, which is a contradiction because we assumed m is greater than or equal to 3. So, in all the subcases, whatever cases we have written, twin prime case, the other cases, all the cases uh, we got, it cannot be written as a pth power. <clears throat> so, this is what the proportion. Uh, this is what we proved y equals to p to the power r for any odd prime p and natural number r then plus or minus 2y minus 1 by 2 alpha this is not a pth power in the corresponding ring of integers uh, by studying the solutions of the diamond ring equations and divisibility properties and we can conclude y divides h of km y how much time i have 20 minutes. Okay. So uh, the proof I will explain, briefly explain. So writing 1 minus 2m y as n squared d and uh, take norm. If I take norm of uh, alpha, that is uh, 2m to the power y and m is odd implies d is also d also we have square free and d is congruent to 3 mod 4. That gives the prime 2 is ramified in the OK. And so we can write the prime ideal 2 as p squared because we are working with quadratic fields. The E, the ramification index is 2 for the ramification. So we write the prime 2, prime ideal 2 as p squared. And PA dividing M splits in K. And uh, M is M, if I write M as uh, prime factorization, P1 raised to the power R1, P2 raised to the power R2, etc. PN raised to the power Rn. Then the corresponding ideal alpha in OK that will split as capital P, where P is coming from that uh, ramified prime uh, 2, and the other primes P1, P2, etc., up to Pn, where Pa is a prime ideal lying above the ideals small Pi, okay? uh, the primes Pi, and Ta is our natural numbers. And Pa splits over K, so the norm of Pa is small Pi. Because of the splitting, we get norm of PA is small p a. And I take the norm of the whole ideal alpha. If I take the norm of the whole ideal alpha, norm of p, the first ideal becomes 2. And norm of the rest of the ideals become p a is p1, p2, etc. Pn. So norm of alpha, this, that is nothing but norm of the, the original alpha that gives p a equals to ri times y. So now consider the ideal i, the 
So we have written T A, the power T A as R I times Y. And take the ideal I, this is capital P times P1 raised to the power R1, P2 raised to the power R2, etc. up to Pn raised to the power Rn. Okay. So now consider I to the power Y. I to the power Y, substituting the corresponding values, that becomes uh, the principal ideal generated by 2 raised to the power y minus 1 by 2 times alpha. So if the order of i is not p to the power r, then it has to be, because we have taken y is p to the power r, it has to be some power of some power of p only. There cannot be another possibility. If the order is not p to the power r, then it has to be some power where uh, k has to be 0 less than or equal to k less than or equal to r minus 1. And the order of i has to divide p to the power r minus 1. At least one, one power less it should divide. So i to the power p minus 1 order divides p to the power r minus 1. If I raise p to the power r minus 1, it should become the principal ideal in the ring of integer. Suppose it is the principal ideal. Then by raising p, then we get uh, i to the power p to the power r is 2 to the power y minus 1 by 2 times alpha. So that gives me beta to the power p is unit times the corresponding element where u is some unit. But we know only units uh, uh, in the fields, we quadratic fields we consider 1 and minus 1. So beta raised to the power p is plus or minus 2 times p minus 1 by 2 times alpha, which is a contradiction. Main theorem. Uh, main theorem proof, how it goes. So, so take M is the given odd number, Y is prime power. So from proportion 1 and 2, we get uh, Y divides the class number and R is strictly greater than 1. That will give 2 is strictly greater than 2 raised to the power P minus 2 divided by P to the power R minus 1. So when R is strictly greater than 1, the corresponding results holds for any odd natural number m. Yeah. This is proof of main theorem by using the proportions. And uh, main theorem to proof, again using proportion 1 and 2, get and uh, yeah. So this is the part where, where we produce uh, two consecutive fields uh, in Isuka's conjecture. So what are those two consecutive fields for any odd natural number y? that divides the class number q of square root of 1 minus 2y. So I write the same q of square root of 1 minus 2m to the power y as 4 times 1 minus 2m raised to the power y raised to the power y. I can rewrite this same, uh, same thing. I can rewrite and uh, take capital U as uh, 2m to the power y minus 1. Then y divides uh, Q of square root of 1 minus 4 U to the power Y. This we get it from the gross results. And uh, by the theorem for mu equals to 4, whatever the theorems uh, already known result for mu equals to 4. And uh, uh, D, if I take uh, 4 times 1 minus 2M to the power Y, then Y divides the class number of both of these fields, uh, Q of square root of D and square root of D plus 1. The infiniteness of uh, this collection again follows from the Siegel's theorem. Siegel's theorem. Uh, now we have one more research. Uh, we took this uh, biquadratic fields and the class number I denoted as HM. And uh, there are three quadratic uh, subfields. And I denote the corresponding class numbers by HM1, HM2, and HM3. And uh, uh, there is a small uh, literature. It says the class number of KM. Uh, is the multiplication of these three class numbers divided by 2 raised to the power i, where i is in some cases it becomes 0 and in some cases it becomes 1. And y is odd in plus y divides hm power 1 because the first subfield is the field we studied the class number and we proved y divides the corresponding class number. And because here the denominator is 2 and y is odd, then we can conclude y divides the uh, class number of this bicotratic field also. So this is something we wrote as a remark on the bicotratic fields. Yeah, 
so uh, uh, so there are more things one can do is prove other cases of uh, we have considered only two consecutive fields in the isa class conjecture and one can uh, take uh, finitely many uh, or given any natural number k uh, take the successive fields and prove the other cases and analyze another generalization of isa class conjecture another generalization is it's like similar to arithmetic progression or something you can consider d and instead of successive d plus one you can go to d plus k and d plus 2k and d plus nk this is somewhat if i take k equals to one then you get the original is the first conjecture so this is what generalization this looks like somewhat arithmetic but uh, one can look for k strictly greater than one also what what happens yeah, instead of proving maybe it may not be true the conjecture but one believes like with some gaps one maybe one can prove the divisibility for that uh, one can study the uh, successive fields with some gap that's what the case the unit gap we put so this is something generalization of isukas conjecture you can read and again uh, another generalization is instead of uh, analyzing the p divisibility any natural number divisibility in place of p you take any natural number ask the same question uh, uh, suppose instead of p i take any natural number r then whether this kind of divisibility holds with some gaps in the fields so these are some references sorry This is 1955 on the divisibility of the class numbers of quadratic <laughs> and Kenya and Shaula's paper. This was the oldest paper we referred to. <clears throat> Azizul wrote uh, so many papers on uh, this topic, this is what, and then Professor Kalyan also. And this was a, a paper of mine in 2016 where I analyzed uh, um, uh, P divides the cardinality of the short D if and only if uh, P divides the class number. Uh, from that point onwards, I was so much interested in analyzing the class numbers and class number divisibility. And uh, the first one, uh, their very first 15th reference, that is a paper published with my student joint work with my student and the other paper is in archive preprint is there in my home page also and there are these are other papers referred thank you any questions comments i was just in a slight question is the issue that one check conjecture talks about the divisibility part? Divisibility. So, is there any similar conjecture for the non divisibility thing also? Or it's 50 50 as we know. So, the same thing will be valid for that also. This coincidence the kind of space. There, no? there is no conjecture as sort of, but there are divisible, non divisibility parts also proved in some papers. No, no, I'm sure non divisibility cases are very much more difficult. It's it's it's, uh, uh, it's very few papers you will find it. Not many, okay. like uh, you know, uh, not many papers are there. This one, you know, no paper uh, you mentioned, and that that's one of the paper. Uh, so non divisibility there are very few cases, especially in real quality cases, even even less. So I was wondering whether some such aspects, uh, but um, even finding a consecutive field uh, to a pair of fields in an infinite family having not divisible by D, D plus one, D plus two. Even a couple lives there. Even for one, it's, it's not that easy. So finding pair, I haven't at least seen some such paper. The conjecture should be similar. But uh, then finding a family with all of them non divisible, non divisible. So there's no standard method for finding really uh, non divisible things. It's again, on and on, on they post the you know, start the yeah, bound kind of post modular form elliptic form stuff like that. So yeah, that would be an interesting thing that you you even not even for one appearance thing that if you take B B one or something, the family.
some anywhere. Uh, they are all non -lipsal. non -lipsal. Yeah, one chat, something is there. One chat, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's no question or online. If there are no more questions or comments from here, let us have the speaker once again.